of the Lord in this place. And I'm going to read, this is a very unlikely text. And I'll probably, uh, at the very near the end somewhere, I'll, uh, when you hear me getting into that, you'll know I'm just about through. If it happens, as it happens, but that's no guarantee always. But I'm, I'm uh, I want to, uh, to speak on a subject called healthy and unhealthy fear. Healthy and unhealthy fear. And I believe that the God that gives revelation will do that tonight. This, this text is very unlikely to be used in this text, but hopefully I'll be able to explain <laughs> the time we're through. And that is 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6. It reads like this. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. I want to talk about healthy and unhealthy fear. Yeah. Praise God. And I believe that uh, God can enlighten us help us mightily tonight. He already has in a very powerful way. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you lift your voice and praise to him once more. Thank you, Jesus. I adore you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You can be seated. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, and I'm going to go through these rapidly, probably, Sister Danielle. No, that's first, Timothy. That's 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. Yeah. That's the one. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If I had 1 Timothy, I apologize. It is 2 Timothy. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power. 1 John 4, 18, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear has torment. It has torment. Now, the command, fear not, is given in the Bible more than any other commandment in the Bible, in, in the whole word of God. Jesus said many times, fear not, such as, Luke eight fifty. Jesus heard it, he answers him saying, fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Matthew 14, 30, when he saw the wind boisterous, afraid and began to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. He was Afraid. Look at verse uh, 4 of chapter 12 in Luke. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, they have no more they can do. I will forewarn you, I'll forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. I, yea, I say unto you, fear him. So in the word, you're commanded to, to fear, and then you're commanded not to fear. Yeah. A mind full of fear has no room for faith. That is, a mind full of unhealthy fear has no room for faith. Obviously, as we've already said, there's a difference in the word fear in the Bible. So there's a fear to shun and a fear to embrace. God does not want you to fear the devil, but to fear God. When the Bible says, be not afraid, that means don't be afraid of the enemy, whatever enemy comes against you. My Bible does say there's a reason why we don't need to fear, because no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. It's not going to happen. I don't care how many...
plans the devil has to destroy your life, it ain't happening. It's not going to happen because you can speak for yourself, but I'm not living in fear. I'm walking by faith. Why do we not need to fear? Because God has the power to make it happen. Yeah. Fear, I've never seen such fear around as there has been through this whole situation of, what is it, pandemic and all that kind of stuff that's happened. Fear caused people to do all sorts of weird things. People scared half to death. Yeah, that's unhealthy fear. Un- unhealthy fear. Yeah. And God knows who you need to be afraid of and who you don't need to be afraid of. There's a fear to shun and there's a fear to embrace. It's who do you fear and what do you fear? Now, I got looking at this and that's why I'm talking about it because the Bible says fear came on the church. Yeah. Yeah. Acts 2.43, and fear came upon, what's it say, every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. That didn't stop wonders and signs from happening because there was fear here, right? Okay, 5.5 five of Acts. Uh, great fear came on all them that heard these things. I want you to notice that. Acts 5.11, and great fear came upon all the church, Acts 9.31. And uh, they were walking in the fear of the Lord. There it is. They're walking in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Now, I checked out from the translated from the, the Greek word, and it is the same for those that were scared of the boogeyman. It's the same Greek word from that to those that were, that the fear came upon them in the church. Same one. From from the word phobos, it means means alarm or fright. Be afraid, exceeding fear and terror. Yeah. Same Greek word. But one says it's good, and the other is not good. Check it out. I'm telling you, it's there. Now, I'm not finished. Just hang on. I got your attention anyway, that's for sure. <laughs> when Jesus said in, in Matthew 10, 28, and fear not, them must kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in, in, uh, in hell. Now, that word actually from the Greek would means to frighten, to be in awe of and revere. Hmm. It does. Okay. So, this scripture is telling me who you fear has a lot to do with whether it's healthy or unhealthy fear. Does not the the Old Testament say, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man? Just now thought of it, but it does say that somewhere. I don't even know where it is, but it's in there somewhere. I'm in the book. I know that. That's what it says. Fear God, keep his commandments, This is the whole duty of man. Okay. This good one here. Not that the others are bad. Hebrews 12 and verse 28 says this. Whereby we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and, what's it say? Godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. I don't know why you want to look at it, but that's a little something to be getting. 
to, to, to pay an attention to. Our God is a consuming fire. Yeah. I like the article that uh, Brother Trapani wrote back uh, years ago. I like it because I just, there's too many songs and all that written about Jesus licking your ears and all this stupid. Not quite, but it's almost that bad. Just sloppy. I call it sloppy agape. And he said, he wrote an article that said this, Jesus is not my boyfriend. Let me just interject this. We serve a holy God. We, we sung about it. We better believe it. We serve a holy God. And he's above everybody else. And he's not on our level. He's above everybody else. He came down to our level to save us. But he's above everybody else. And he inhabits eternity. Now, the Strong's number is the same for both words. It's used godly fear. From the Greek word, it's translated in English, godly fear. We're to serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. And it's number 2124, and it's eulabia. I expect you to remember that. But it means reverence and dread. Yeah, godly. We're instructed to serve God with godly fear. It's like this. Recognize who God is and who you are. You need to say it like this. God, you're absolutely wonderful, and thank you for what you, you've done, but God, all the bouquets I'm giving to you because I know who I'd be and what I'd be if it wasn't for you. I'm giving it all to you, Lord. I'm giving all the bouquets to you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, Matthew 14, 27 says this. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Hallelujah. Why could he say that? Because of who it was? We need to recognize that it's Jesus. And don't complain about all the things that might be happening in your life. Just recognize that Jesus is in it. And when he's in something, yeah, really. Don't blame all just because you have troubles and all that comes your way. That Blame it on the devil. Just say, God, I know it's my bad comes and good comes. But whatever it is, all things are going to work together for good anyway. So, so uh, yeah, just, just recognize that. The, the, I might point out the, the gods of the heathen all down through history of the Bible, demanded to be feared. The gods of the heathen demanded that you were scared of them. The only God, and I want to say the only God, he is the only God. All else are fake gods. They're not real gods. There's only one true God, and he demands to be loved. He does. Look at, look at Mark chapter 12, verse 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Wow. You love God with all that. Now, I'm going to point out some scriptures that the fear of the Lord is the beginning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning. In other words, you need to have healthy fear. And you need to get the fear of the Lord in you first. It's the beginning, okay? The beginning. In other words, you, you better start right. If you haven't started it right, go back to the beginning. We live in, or that is rather, sorry, that is living in a realm where you don't want to hurt or displease God. 
That's the fear of the Lord. God, you're so awesome. I don't want to hurt or displease you. Having an awesome respect for God. Praise God. The beginning. 111 of Psalm. Psalm 111.10. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Go to the next one. Proverbs 1.7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Proverbs 9.10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, Psalm, 1, Psalm 55 and verse 19 says, because they have no changes, therefore they fear not God. Or because they have no changes, or because things do not change, they have no fear. That is the good fear. That's a good fear. They have no fear. Or it's like this. Well, nothing bad's happened to me. And I've been really disobedient. Nothing bad's happened to me so far. No fires come down from heaven and wipe me out. Therefore, I guess I won't change. Yeah. Because there's no fear of the Lord. Because they don't fear God, then there's no change. God wants us to have such an awesome respect of him that we want to change, that we want to draw closer to him. Hallelujah. This is good treaching. It may not be good preaching. It may not be good teaching, but it's good treaching. Hallelujah. Now, I'm here now. Hey, it's getting close to the end. And I'm here. I'm going back to that scripture that we read. And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience. I don't know if that's possible. You'll go back to that anyway, is it? 2 Corinthians 10, 6, is that possible? Well, Tony, I'm so glad that you're back home. I can hardly stand it. Where's that guitar? He plays the guitars. See what he got? I know we got Tony can drum and all that, but anyway, never mind. 2 Timothy 10, verse 6. What did I say? No, 2 Corinthians 10, 6, yeah. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now, why? That is... Before or after conversion, still having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. It's having the fear of God in you to such extent. You say, I'm getting revenge on the devil for all the time that I spent serving him. I'm getting revenge against the devil for all the lies and the junk that he put in my life I'm getting revenge I'm getting revenge how am I going to get revenge because I'm going to obey I'm going to obey God hallelujah I'm getting revenge against that disobedience uh, I'm going to obey God Ooh, feel that oh hallelujah yes I am or living in a realm where you do not want to disappoint or hurt God living in that realm I don't want to hurt I don't want to disobey or disappoint God. Thank you, Lord. The fear of the Lord, an awesome reverence, a dread, yes, a dread of displeasing God because he loves you so much. You don't want to hurt him. Oh, hallelujah. Now, The Bible says, submit yourselves to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. That word flee means to run in terror. He will flee from you. It does not mean that you are a coward. It means that you're running from the temptation and you're running to God. You're running away from the devil. You're getting away from temptation. And you are running to God. You are fleeing from disobedience. I'm sick of that lifestyle. I'm sick.
sick of the enemy deceiving me and lying to me. I'm running to obedience. I'm running to God. I'm fleeing from temptation. I'm running away from what the enemy has tormented with me with all of my life, and I'm running to God. That's healthy fear, the fear of the Lord, when your obedience is fulfilled. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, this next verse of Scripture is in Psalm 119, verse 11. I want you to know that nobody read their Bible here. In New, I, hey, I'm going to blow you away even more. Nobody read their Bible in the New Testament at church either. They didn't have any. <laughs> I love saying that because it just shocks people. They didn't have Bibles. I said, that'll prove to you you need a relationship with God all the time. Okay, with that in mind, Psalm 119 and verse 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Now, that goes against Sunday school curriculum. I understand that. Because, uh, you know, but really, they didn't have Bibles then. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. What's your heart? It's your emotions. I want your word hid in my heart. The fear of the Lord. What's it mean, the word of God? What's it mean? If God has spoken to you, whether it's through the written word, the spoken word, a situation, a person, however it is, if God has spoken to you, get a hold of it. And say, my God has spoken to me. Ooh, he's given me direction. I'm going to take it. I'm going to hide it in my emotions. That I might not sin against God. Because he's been so good to me. Ooh, that's the fear of the Lord. That's healthy fear. And I believe that's what we got to get a hold of. Hallelujah. What's the opposite of unhealthy fear? It's faith. It's faith in God. It really is. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Maria, it's a big deal what God did to you this morning. It's a big deal. Oh, yeah. It's a big deal. Thank you, Jesus. I think we need to let faith just continue to reign in our hearts. There's faith in here. There's faith. There was faith in here in your hearts when you came in here. And then there's still faith. There's faith in this church. There's faith in people that God's doing something absolutely fantastic. I've got the picture up in my office on my phone. Brother Josh Resard, I showed you the empty wheelchair. So somebody. Anyway. The empty wheelchair. Yes, I did. Praise God. You know what this story, that story is? That lady was wheeled, wheeled in, and she pushed her wheelchair out. Wheeled in, and she pushed the wheelchair out. That happened. That happened. That's not over in you know some remote place in China or India or Thailand or some things where you know that stuff's relegated to. That kind of thing happens just there. No, that happened in Texas. Imagine that. Whoa. All those from Texas should be shouting, shouting about that one. That happened. That's, that's, a, that's a big deal. You know what? I am believing God for greater things than we've ever seen before. Where are you? Brother Richard McCleary, he's around here somewhere, probably with the youngster. But I, 
I'll t- he gave a devotional and preacher talk this morning and talked about how that we're going to minister in areas we've never even been in ourselves because that's what God's doing. God's going to instruct you to walk into areas that you haven't even been in before yourself because he's coming soon and there's people that need delivered and are going to be delivered through the power that's in the name of Jesus. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah's attitude before was, who, me, God? I'm too upset about what's happening with King Uzziah and all that bad stuff and everything. I'm kind of surrounded with all that. But one time, once the power from heaven touched him, once the power from the altar touched him, hallelujah, he went, no, I didn't mean that, Lord. Here am I, send me. I'll do it. <laughs> That's what you were talking about, wasn't it, from the Milton? Here am I, send me. And I believe that there's people in here right now, in your heart of hearts. You can feel it's leaping right now. Lord, here am I. Send me. It's leaping right now. That's because faith is rising in you. Uh, Hallelujah. And I'd like us just to to spend a few moments here tonight. 30 minutes. Look at that. I'd like for us to spend a few minutes here tonight. Just not moments, but minutes. Just minutes giving glory and praise unto the Lord, letting your faith soar. Some of you need to believe God to do greater things than you've ever seen before. I mean, how many more signs do you need? You know, like, like, like what, huh? what do you want God to do to tell you, show you that he's real? real really, is, this, is there anybody in here besides me that believes that God's real? Hallelujah. Why don't you stand right now if you do? uh, Stand right now and lift your voice to the Lord uh, and praise him right now. Uh, Hallelujah. 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 God, I desire you. Uh, Hallelujah. 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 And I worship you, mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 In the name that's above all names, Jesus. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm getting bold right now, but I'm feeling it. This is what I'm feeling. As faith is moving upon you, when that begins to happen, God sending his gifts to you, and you're going to reach out in areas that you've never been in before, just make sure you give all the bouquets to Jesus. Make sure you keep keeping him in awesome reverence. Hallelujah. Hey, don't be afraid. God's not going to do nothing to hurt you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't be surprised when God performs a miracle right before your eyes. I don't know if I've ever talked like this before, but I'm talking about it right now, and I'm believing it. I said, don't be surprised when God performs a miracle right before your eyes. Praise God. Don't say, who, me? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 That's right. God has a habit of using those people who said, who, me, in the Bible, and making something dynamic happen through them. Why don't you just let your guard down and just say, God, whatever you want, I'm, I'm willing to do. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Whether you want to step out of your seat or whether you want to stay where you are or whatever you want to do, I don't really care, but just reach out to the Lord right now and say, God, here am I. Uh, Hallelujah. Do what you wish to do in my life. Uh, Let your face soar right now. Uh, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I will bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I will bless that name as above all names. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Ramando Rapasura and Nidibi or Ramasaya. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. I desire you, O Lord. I 